So on December 31st, there's going to be a big show taking place out in Japan, Ota City General Gymnasium, Tokyo, Japan, uh, being promoted by Watanabe Promotions. And it's going to feature three world championship fights. Um, headlining is going to be Reichi Taguchi, defending his WBA uh, light flyweight championship and unifying that, that said championship with IBF light flyweight champion Milan Melindo of the Philippines. And this fight, incidentally, is also for the Ring Magazine light flyweight championship, um, which hasn't been, uh, there, there hasn't been a Ring Magazine uh, light flyweight champion, I believe, since uh, Giovanni Segura uh, left the division um, back in, what was that, about 2010. So it's been, it's been a little while, but um, it'll be really interesting to see a, a new, a new uh, ring champion at the very least crowned. Um, as far as Lineal, uh, insofar as the TBRB goes, um, the, the winner of this fight would, it would wind up having to fight uh, Ken Shiro, the WBC champion, in order to truly crown a Lineal champion. Um, along with uh, Taguchi vs. Melindo, there is Sho Kimura defending his WBO flyweight championship that he just uh, defeated Zhou Shiming to, to uh, get. He defeated Zhou Shiming by, a, what was it, about 10 round, 10th round uh, TKO. And he's going to be defending it. Oh, excuse me, it was an 11th round TKO. He's going to be defending it against uh, former WBC flyweight champion Toshiyugi Igarashi. Former WBC and lineal flyweight champion Igarashi. Um, and then also to start off uh, the, the championship portion of this telecast, is going to be Hiroto Chocolatito Kyoguchi defending his IBF strawweight championship against Carlos Chocoroncito Buitrago of Nicaragua. Just uh, three, three excellent fights, um, great triple header, you know, featuring fighters um, from Japan, Nicaragua, and the Philippines respectively. Um, but let me get into a little bit of analysis on the, on the fights. Um, Taguchi vs. Melindo, I've covered this fight um, recently on, on this channel. I've talked about how Melindo, if he manages to defeat Taguchi, uh, he'll have had as good a 2017 as just about any fighter in boxing, uh, considering the fact that he does have a first-round knockout win over three-weight champion Akira Higashi, as well as a split decision, albeit disputed split decision, but a, a split decision um, victory, nonetheless, over uh, former strawweight kingpin Heki Butler. Uh, Ryota Taguchi is coming off of a, a great knockout victory over Robert Barrera, and um, was looking to try to uh, potentially uh, rematch Carlos Canizales, who actually held him to a draw um, last New Year's, but, uh, you know, the the... The unifications came a-calling, and um, originally it was supposed to be Kosei Tanaka, the former WBO champion, who has since uh, vacated and moved up to flyweight, that was going to be fighting Taguchi uh, on New Year's, but um, Tanaka couldn't make the weight anymore. He had some injuries from his last fight, so Melindo decided to fill in, and it's going to be a really good fight between these two. Uh, Taguchi is a very, very high volume, high stamina, high endurance fighter. Uh, when you're fighting Taguchi... You, you know you better be ready to work you better be ready because he's gonna he's gonna work you he's gonna work you he's, he's looking to wear you down um the guys that really have given taguchi the most trouble are guys that are kind of stick and move type fighters you know guys that maybe throw one or two punches at a time and then they're getting out of dodge you know they're they're darting around the ring and give him have forcing him to reset himself and give him all different kinds of angles um as for Melindo, though the guys that have definitely had that have generally give him given him trouble are actually kind of the same type of fighters as as with taguchi you know guys that are more kind of on the move guys that are constantly resetting themselves or on the other hand um guys that have very high volumes as as taguchi does um estrada kind of utilized like a blend of both styles in order to pretty handily outbox uh Melindo before and even javier mendoza javier mendoza was a lot more of a um more of like an inside to mid-range kind of a like slick southpaw-esque fighter and he was you know he was able to kind of flummox Melindo with the, the different kind of angles that he was giving him um taguchi isn't really going to give him those angles he's basically looking to go right at Melindo and just pile on the pressure pile on the volume where him down. Melindo, for his sake, is going to be looking to um, really set set his feet down and just plant heavy counter-punching power punches. Um, that's Melindo's game. That's the way he was able to knock out uh, Akira Higashi, and that was the, the way he was able to get the decision over Butler, because he actually forced Butler, who tends to be a lot more of a defensive um, type of a fighter, you know, kind of a defensive, relatively high work rate fighter for a defensive fighter, but a guy that likes to pot shot you. He kind of um, forced Butler to come after him, and he was kind of playing the pot shot game with Butler. 
So here, uh, Melino is definitely going to be looking to set up just heavy power shots. Um, probably trying to avoid it going to the cards, you know, uh, for, for, for his sake. You know, maybe feeling like um, judging in, in Japan may not be so fair. But although uh, Japan, in, insofar as whenever foreign fighters uh, fi are fighting Japanese um, domestic fighters, uh, generally get a pretty fair shake over there from, from what I've seen. Um, it's not as, it's not quite as... Um, is uh, iffy as say like Thailand, you know, where it's a you know Thai, Thai fighters tend to get a bit more of the benefit of the doubt um, when they're on home court. But that's going to be a really excellent fight. Um, really, it's the the fight of the 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 night, the fight of the weekend. Um, just just a great fight, you know, one of one of the all time clashes I think uh, potentially there at at the in the light flyweight division. Um, maybe not even just recently, maybe even all time. It really just depends on uh, exactly how it turns out. But I think it's going to be an excellent fight. Um, just the way the two styles mesh, I think we're going to be, be in for a lot of uh, very exciting exchanges. And um, who, I mean, really, they, they, I think they play off of each other's strengths and weaknesses really well. You know, Melindo will have plenty of counter-punching opportunities that Taguchi gives him. And Taguchi will be looking to just pile on the pressure on uh, Melindo, who most likely will be um, you know, looking to set up his own shots enough that he'll be in range because Melindo is uh, significantly shorter than Taguchi. You know, Melindo is only about five foot two. Taguchi is listed at five foot five and a half. I think it's closer to five foot six and a half, frankly. Um, so Taguchi has a pretty big height and reach advantage. Um, you know, he's a, but although he tends to use that height and reach more so for leverage on his shots and and the the constant streams of combinations that he throws. Um, Taguchi does have an excellent chin, however. So if Melindo thinks that he's just going to bomb him out of there, um, he may have another thing coming, considering the fact that Taguchi is, was the first man to go the distance against Night Inoue, albeit it was only the 10-round distance. And he actually won a couple of rounds against Inoue. That was uh, back when Inoue, um, just before Inoue won his uh, first world title at 108 pounds. Um, but other than that, he's been uh, on a hell of a winning streak. He's, he's the longest reigning title holder currently at 108. Um, and... You know he's coming up against uh, Melindo, who's probably the most explosive kind of recent entrance entrant into 108. Um, save Kose Tanaka, who's now gone from weight class. Um, but uh, Melindo's coming off a couple of really nice wins as well. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, over Yagashi, over Butler, um, over Terapangu Utaida in order to have, first get that shot at Yagashi. That was a very big win as well. Um, Utaida being the son of a former uh, champion, Falan Sakrinin, back in the the early. Was it about the early mid '90s, um, and who was who was a great fighter in the lower weights at his own in his own right. Um, but moving on to the other two fights, um, Sho Kimura versus Toshiyuki Igarashi. Um, this is a pretty interesting fight because it's uh, it's almost a bit of a crossroads fight. You know, it's between two fighters who weren't necessarily um, or who haven't necessarily been as hi highly and heavily heralded as some of their peers. You know, like they, these guys aren't. Shinsuke Yamanaka, these guys aren't Kazuto Ioka, these guys aren't uh, Takashi Uchiyama, but they've been plugging away for years, and you know they they've kind of finally both earned their their shot at the spotlight. Um, albeit uh, Igarashi has been a champion before, as I mentioned before, um, he was the WBC and the lineal uh, flyweight or yeah flyweight champion um, after he defeated Sonny Boy Haro. Uh, he only made one defense of that over uh, Nestor Novaez before he wound up losing it to Akira Yagashi. So he was only a world champion for a little bit less than a year uh, before Yagashi managed to uh, defeat him for, for that belt. Of course, Yagashi would go on to lose uh, to Chocolatito Gonzalez, um, just so you know where the lineage kind of went with regards to that. Um, Shokimura is coming off of a, a very big win over uh, Zhou Shiming. A win, however, um, where personally I felt that he was being outboxed, and uh, I, th I think even the, the judges felt that he was being outboxed. Uh, two of the judges actually had um, Zhou Shiming uh, winning that fight up until the stoppage in the 11th round. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of rumors that Zhou Shiming wasn't really training properly. You know, he was it was his first fight um, out you know, without top rank promoting him. He was doing all the promotion himself, all the managerial work himself, all of the kind of day to day, you know, paperwork and grinding stuff that you would expect, um, you know, people behind the scenes to be doing um, in terms of the boxing promotion himself. So it, it may have been uh, Kimura catching him at the right time. Uh, but be that as it may, um, he caught him. He he got him down. He got him out of there. And, um, you know, even though uh, Zoshiming was looking to try and get a rematch with him, it, it appears as though he might have a detached retina from that fight, um, incidentally, which, which is, ugh, it's it's kind of iffy, man. Hopefully he's able to pull through that, but enough about Zoshiming. 
getting back to Kimura, um, he you know he he put a lot of pressure on Shimin. Um Pressure is his game. It's the name of his game. It's not a, not almost not unlike um, Taguchi. Although I'm not necessarily sure if his punch variety is quite as varied as uh, Taguchi's is. His hand speed isn't quite as quick, uh, but he's actually really really good at cutting off the ring. He was actually able to pretty consistently cut off the ring on Zoshiming really really well. Um, you know, Zoshimi is a very kind of darty, you know, here and there, uh, move around the ring type of fighter who's looking at, you know, he's, um, he's almost kind of that, you know, tag your it type of, you know, amateur Aiba style of, of the past 20 or so years, really. Um, he kind of mastered that, and, you know, which is what led him to being such a successful amateur. Um, Igarashi, on the other hand, is a guy that's a little bit more on the, on the gritty side. Um, although Igarashi doesn't necessarily have... Um, outright knockout power. He's a guy that's a little bit rougher on the inside. Um, a little bit cleaner technically, though, I'd say, than, than um, Kimura, at least in, in so far as um, like kind of the textbook boxing, you know, the jab, the hook. Everything comes a little, just that, you know, just slightly sharper angles than what Kimura does. Um, but Igarashi also has been, um, I guess, maybe the purveyor and or the victim of a, of a number of uh, head clashes in several of his fights. Um, that have unfortunately marred them. As a matter of fact, he actually had uh, two recent technical decisions that got called. Be you know, the fights basically got called off in the middle of them. Um, they were technical decision draws against uh, Miguel Cartagena and Jonathan Francisco due to head clashes. Um, you know, so Igarashi will lead with his head a little bit. You know, he'll kind of throw his head in there along with uh, the hooks to the body and the hooks to the head and things of that nature. So this fight could be a really good fight. You know, a really great, you know, kind of inside uh, toe-to-toe war, tit-for-tat. Or, or even a mid-range kind of a boxing, you know, boxer versus kind of swarmer type of fight where Igarashi is the boxer and um, Kimura is the swarmer. Or it could wind up getting marred by fouls, head clashes, elbows, etc. You know, it, it could really go either way. Because um, cause Igarashi, just, uh, it just seems to happen to him uh, <laughs> way more often than not. Uh, but hopefully it'll be a good fight. Um, and then moving on to the strawweight bout for the IBF title. Hiroto Chocolatito Kiyoguchi, um, you know, he, of course, he, he named himself after Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. He's a young guy, he's 24. He's basically a guy that has come up um, in Japan, kind of, on, I don't necessarily want to say under the tutelage of, of, of Roman Gonzalez, but kind of uh, like, um, as almost like a peer, like a, young, like a younger peer, like seeing like an like a older brother or older cousin kind of um, do his thing, you know, he saw Roman Gonzalez, you know, he, he's trained with him, um, you know, he kind of idolized the, the guy, and uh, he very much styled himself after him, you know, that's a big part of the reason why he kind of took on his name, he fights in, in a relatively similar manner, you know, kind of that high guard, you know, side to side, um, kind of pressure fighting, a lot of hooks to the body, um, he's not quite as much of a buzzsaw as Roman Gonzalez is, he tends to pick his spots a little bit more so, and I'm not necessarily sure how much power he has in comparison, um, he, the, the two fights that he's had um, at kind of the top level, incidentally, or at least the, the one, like, championship fight that he's had at the top level, um, where he won this title, the IBF title, against Jose Argumedo. He wasn't ever necessarily really... There was a couple of times where he kind of momentarily stunned Argumedo, which is, you know, uh, something that I don't think is necessarily easy to do because Argumedo is kind of a tough guy. He's kind of this one of, one of those kind of wily, kind of tough type of fighters, like a, a Marcus Maidana-style type of fighter, you know, who just had, like, he gives no... He gives no fucks, you know, he gives no dams, he's, like, he's, he takes no quarter in the ring, you know, if you hit him, like, you're gonna have to, like, hit him with a bat to knock him out, basically, he's that type of fighter. But, um, here against Carlos Buitrago, um, he's fighting against, uh, another kind of, um, fellow of, uh, of, uh, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, uh, somebody that knows Gonzalez extremely well, somebody that's sparred expensive, extensively with, uh, with Gonzalez, and a guy that was kind of coming up, um, right behind Gonzalez as, you know, potentially the next big thing out of Nicaragua. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I mean, really a lot of people really had high hopes for Buitrago on his way up the ranks, considering the fact that he was just completely just schooling, outboxing, dominating the, the field of opposition that he had been fighting all the way up until he got to the world level. I mean, even all the way up until he fought um, Julian Yedras, who is the fighter who, incidentally, the, the aforementioned Kosei Tanaka defeated to gain his first world title at 105 pounds. Um, Buitrago actually defeated him more concretely than Tanaka did, um, you know, which is saying something. But after that, uh, when he got 
t world title opportunities against um, first Molito Sabio of the Philippines and then uh, Knockout CP Freshmart of Thailand um, for the WBO and the WBA titles respectively. He just left too much to be desired. You know, he's like he left a little bit too much in the tank. It's almost um, as though it's like he, in a way, he's like in Nicaragua's Adrian Broner, I guess you might say. Um, maybe without all of the, the out of the ring antics necessarily. Although I'm not, I'm not necessarily privy to whatever out of the ring antics he he may have been um, involved in. But um, basically, you know, the the guy's shown a ton of potential in terms of the talent that he has and the skill that he has. Um, you know, he fights in a very kind of American style. I mean, he fights uh, like, like a fighter that you would have you'd picture would fight out of like say like the Mayweather gym in, in Vegas. Um, you know, he fights out of a out of a kind of a Philly shell shoulder roll, um, throws a lot of check hooks, pull counter right hands, uh, and you know he's he's really just looking to kind of like catch and counter, pull and counter. Um, you know, he's a he's a very kind of a, a classical, um, like slick stylist, uh, the slick defensive stylist. Um, but really, a lot of uh, what's kind of plagued him at the top level, uh, particularly against Sabio and, and CP Freshmart, is just not letting his hands go. You know, he's uh, he's allowed his his opponents to outwork him. And summarily uh, outpoint him when it when it came down to it. Um, Sabio wound up actually getting a draw against him, um, so you know Sabio didn't lose his title, of course. And then CP Freshmart in their first fight won a close and relatively controversial unanimous decision. A lot of people thought Buitrago deserved to win it. They wound up ordering a rematch um, after uh, Buitrago then went on to defeat former champion Mario Rodriguez. And uh, in the second fight against CP Freshmart. Um, he CP outworked him a little bit more um, cleanly, and uh, Boitrago left even more t to be desired, which is unfortunate. Um, I think the guy's uh, extremely skilled, extremely talented, probably one of the more the more skilled uh, fighters at the lower weight classes. Really, it's just a matter of um, him. I think kind of believing in himself, believing in the, the the moments where he's able to time his opponents and just letting his hands go, basically. Um, and it, should he choose to really fight to, to what I think is his full potential, I think we may get uh, just a classic fight between him and, and Kyoguchi, considering the fact that Kyoguchi, since he has styled himself after Gonzalez, will be giving Buitrago a look that Buitrago has seen in sparring many times before. Um, you know, Buitrago's sparred uh, as much with uh, Roman Gonzalez as probably any fighter in on the planet. So he, he knows that style, um, you know, probably front to back, top to bottom. So um, it'll be interesting to, to see um, how Buitrago reacts to kind of Kyoguchi's version of that style and how Kyoguchi is able to deal with a fighter who potentially is able to solve a lot of the problems that he's there putting him putting in his face and see you know really just uh, what the young kid in, in Kyoguchi's got you know he's only eight fights into his pro career this one's only going to be his ninth fight so um you know it's all it's almost kind of like a youngster versus vet in a way even though Boitrago's not necessarily that much older than him um only a few years but uh be that as it may it's a it's a great fight um I think uh a little bit better than uh, the Kimura versus Igarashi fight, but you know, like I said, the the Kimura versus Igarashi fight, considering um, the history of Igarashi and uh, how Kimura kind of um, came up the hard way, I think it might be really interesting. You know, Kimura is very hungry um, to you know press forward and and uh, you know really change his life for, for the better after the Zoshiming win, and Igarashi is looking to uh, you know uh, get get some of that glory back and uh, you know become one of the one of the big names of uh, of Japanese boxing once more. But um and then finally of course back back to the main event Taguchi versus Melindo it's a unification which um you know it's it's been it's been a couple of years since we've had a, a unification at the 108 pounds. It's been several years almost you know over half a decade since we've had a ring magazine champion at light flyweight and there's a good possibility that the winner of this fight may wind up fighting Kenshiro at some point in 2018 which would of course lead us to having a full-on lineal champion and maybe even an undisputed champion at some point um, depending on if um, they're able to get the current WBO champion Angela Costa in the ring um, which I think they, they might be able to do considering the fact that Acosta has already fought uh, Kosei Tanaka over in Japan so um, three great fights here, um, you know, December 31st in Japan, uh, doing it big consistently on a year by year basis, the, the past shoot half decade or, or even longer in, in Japan, um, have been really, really have had really excellent cards. Um, and especially in the last few years, 
in particular, considering uh, how many um, elite world class level Japanese fighters have um, come to ro rise to prominence um, in in the world rankings in, amongst the uh, title holders and things of that nature. So that's gonna do it for this one. I'll catch you. Oh yeah, um, I'll put the link in the description for the stream. It has been working out particularly well for me, and it's gonna be taking place, um, like I said, on Sunday, December thirty first. At about, I think it's going to be, the start time will probably be somewhere between 7 and 8 p.m. Japanese time, which would correspond to about 2 to 3 a.m. Pacific time. So about 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern time in the, in the U.S. Um, so, you know, just adjust that accordingly for wherever your time zone happens to be. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.